You are listening to an all new episode of the Model Experience Podcast, live from the Model House. The Model Experience is the number one resource for models. Real models, real stories, real resources. Visit themodelexperience.net to learn more and be sure to follow us on Instagram at The Model Experience. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Model Experience Podcast. This is Rio Summers. We are here at the Model House, and I am sitting with some really cool people right now. I'm going to go ahead and introduce them, starting with my co host. Across from me, we have the co author of Posing 101 and the CEO of the Model <laughs> hello, Experience, Miss Ashley Runway. Cash Ash in the house. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. And to our right, we have Miss Lamaya Good, our very own in house producer. That's right, you actress, super producer. Girl. Super producer, <laughs> big That's sister. Awesome. Yay! Come and on. we have a very special guest today. Yes. One of the best headshot photographers in LA, That's our very nice. own friend, Brandon Espy. Yay! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me on. Yes, we're excited. We like to get different people's perspectives on this show. Usually we get models' perspectives, but it's really cool to get people behind the camera yeah. or that are, you know, just not necessarily models. Yeah, we need all of that expert advice and expertise going on. We need the full package here because modeling, you have to embody everything. We need to know it all. And you yeah. used to be a model. Yeah, I, yeah, I used to be a model, yeah. Are you I, surprised? No. <laughs> no, I'm, like, I'm, I'm 6'3". 6'3", six three. Six six three, three, okay. almost 6'4". So yeah. what are some of the stuff you did? Like, was it print, runway? Uh, mostly just print work, a lot of catalog work, a lot of Kmart, yeah. Target, um, Macy's back in the day. I did a lot of athletic work from Nike, Adidas. I was with LA Models. That's um, awesome. And then commercials with NTA. I shot with Bruce Weber for Vanity Fair. Um, wow. wow, I didn't know that. That's yeah. amazing. And I, I, I don't really mention it. Yeah, I guess because uh, now I'm I'm total opposite from that life. Yeah, so, so how did just, that happen? So it happened, I say, once I bought a camera. Once I bought a camera, that opened up the possibilities to other ways of creating content within that industry. Right. And it kind of just open my eyes to uh, certain other income. When I started modeling, I graduated from college in 2010. Um, I, after that, I moved to New York. I was out there working for like almost a year. And it wasn't really working out for me. I mean, I was working every now and then, but right. also my size at the time, I'm graduating, I'm like 6'3", 210. Every guy <laughs> in my height out there is like 170. Mm -hmm. And certain sample sizes, yeah. it's just like, only thing I could do was like either underwear or other body <laughs> stuff that, you know. You were pigeonholed. Yeah, pigeonholed. You know, I felt like a, a slut basically out there. It just <laughs> like, I was just used in a way, but not like actual like, yeah. physical yeah. slut. <laughs> Like, like, a, like a visual slug. Yeah, you know? yeah. Hey, there's and a difference, so, guys. Yeah, and so with me, I just, uh, I wanted to move to L.A. Uh, just also because I was born here. And I just wanted to see other opportunities in other markets. Mm -hmm. Out here being more commercial lifestyle, right. I was uh, more willing to do that. And it just seemed a lot more along my values and morals. There we go. <laughs> so how long were you modeling for I was mod I stopped modeling I say almost four years ago. Four nice. years ago, yeah. So, so 2000, 2015, 2000, yeah, 2015, I say. I, I have a secret too. I saw you in a music video. <laughs> what music uh, video? Is it Janae? Oh yeah, it's Janae. Oh, this is recent. Well, no, this is a while. I, I, was, told I, me, I played her voice. Yeah, I was like, in, what? Like, the pressure video. Oh, uh, you know what? Okay, so you've been around. You've been around. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's dope. Did yeah. that help you behind the camera at all? I say, okay, with that video, I was also helping out with producing. Oh, wow. Um, and we needed uh, talent at the last second for that role. <laughs> and so I just stopped. I just hopped in. Yeah. I say that and other kind of stuff, like, like I said, buying a camera, that mm -hmm. opened the possibilities of so many other things. Cause once I bought a camera, that's when I started going into shooting headshots. Got it. And that's when I started just shooting little short videos. I started, I put so much money into different short films, kind of like commercial spec stuff I wanted to do. Just so, anything I would yeah. see, yeah, different content. Because yeah. once I would just constantly just be on set and you would see the control, the creative director, the director, writer, those have over the talent. Right. I wanted to have that control because that. when I was working in front, I just never had control. 
because I was just you're just being told I'm, what to do. Yeah, it's yeah. Funny. yeah, most actors or just anybody who kind of just spreads themselves out in the entertainment business, that's the thing. When you start off as actor or model, it's almost like a natural progression when you want to be involved on the other side. You want a little more mm -hmm. in with the creative control. You want a little more in with your ideas and things yeah. like that. So it kind of opens And then you get up. more of the budget sometimes too, right? Exactly. <laughs> that was the whole yeah, thing yeah. too. Yeah. Once, I started, goes, once I started producing and like especially line producing, and yeah. seeing the budget and where all the money was going yeah. I was like wow this makes so much more sense yeah. and it was so much more in my alley and what I really did is just I just started failing like crazy but just taking crazy risks and yeah. failing yeah. hard learning from my experiences yeah. getting better better. that's really the best thing I would say that I've done so you would say it's very important to fail it's very important to fail if you don't fail here then you don't know uh, if you don't fail you're not really taking risks you're yeah. playing it safe and you're always going to be like a little bit short, I feel like. You're, yeah. you're going to reach your full potential. Mm -hmm. And also, let's say, you know, you ride on this 20-year wave where you haven't failed at all. And then finally the day comes where you do fail and you have no idea how to react to it. Like, right. You know, this yeah. could you be someone. pick yourself up. Exactly. Let's say, you know, you're 45 years old and you haven't failed your entire life. And then a 20-year-old fails for the first time and they're able to pick themselves back up and like, quicker like than you are. And you're just stuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. So as a photographer, how much <clears throat> directing... Are you doing I'm doing a lot um, more specifically so as far as photography right now either shoot headshots or I shoot test for agencies so they send me people for paid tests nice what agencies do you work with I work with um, I work with natural models I work with LA models sometimes sometimes I work with NTA it all depends on what agency needs my look. Got right. So I do like a lot of commercial lifestyle a lot of happy smiley and now there's a lot of new print agencies that pop up that hit me up for tests for their people but mostly lately it's been a lot so of he's got that reputation now yeah it's been more so a lot of been a lot more so plus size and curve lately because mm -hmm. once i started shooting that uh i say a few years ago and the agencies started liking what i was doing with them and how i was shooting then i started just getting other agencies who hit me but up. how did you get their trust that's interesting so that's right? the thing too so what i did is a risk I took as a photographer before anything. I started making commercials for my photography because I did... I've actually seen one. Yeah. <laughs> they're very funny. They're really stupid. Yeah. yeah, they're really, really stupid. And the reason I made comedic photography commercials because I saw no one else do it. Mm -hmm. And I would see everyone else and it would be like the same boring thing. Right. We never really got to know them. And once I made these little comedic ads for my photography, people saw me more so um, and humanized me. Mm. And it got people to trust me and feel more comfortable with me. That's interesting. Yes. And that way, agents, they felt like they could send a girl to me and not worry about something happening to her. Right. So you, you know? kind of put this reputation out there that you're funny, easy going to work with. That's yeah. interesting. That's a cool perspective. That's and pretty genius. Yeah, yeah, especially with the agencies because, you know, they're very tight mm. tight lips. So what do agencies look for in a photo? Just super crisp or... For modeling or... I guess... Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good start. question. Yeah, yeah. What's the difference between a headshot for a model versus actor? Yeah. Okay, headshot for a model is a lot more, you have a lot more freedom as far as certain lighting, certain composition, certain way, like you could get away with a model headshot that's almost profile and you can't do that in mm. acting. Acting headshots, you always have to look at the camera. Your eyes can never kind of like, you can't look off the camera and, and call that a headshot. And the depth to feel is different. Depth yeah. to feel is different too. For um, and also for headshots for acting, there's commercial and then there's theatrical. I was just yeah. gonna ask you yeah. about that. The difference. Do you feel like there's a difference between? Because a lot of the models that we have that we deal with mm -hmm. aren't signed, and so I know mm -hmm. a lot of times with acting, there's kind of a difference for people who aren't signed, the type of headshots they have to take, mm -hmm. versus the people who are with an agency mm -hmm. when you're taking theatrical, um, commercial. So what's the difference? Do you feel like what do you have to do when you don't have an agency to stand out in your headshots versus when you don't have a, when you don't have an agency, shoot with the top headshot photographers that you can. Okay. Uh, with me, I'll be honest, when I started off in headshots, I looked up the top headshot photographers. I literally copied their business model. Yeah. I studied the composition of their photos, a lot of trial and error. I saw what worked. I, I saw their list of people. I saw them working. I was like, so this is it. This is how you make this happen. 
And a lot of times a roadmap is out there. You just have to like do yeah, your research. Exactly. You have to do your research. Yeah. yeah. And that's really type of vibe. There's certain photographers like David Muller, Michael Roud. Right. Um, Dana Patrick is will always be a classic. Theo and Juliet, those are some of the top photographers out here. And those are the ones that the top agencies send their talent to. And so I just try to emulate their work and put my little thing on it. Yeah, and yeah. what happened with me, I ended up being more so leaning towards commercial headshots. Uh, my style yeah. was more bright, poppy, vibrant, so colorful that's backdrops. that's a commercial headshot, right? Yeah. Poppy. Because mm -hmm. I know back in the day, commercial headshots used to be like a bright pink color. Is it still the same way? It's still like, like a bright shirt. Okay. What should you not wear for a commercial headshot? And what okay. should you wear for a commercial headshot? For a commercial headshot, you should emphasize on layering. Um, if you see most, it's really nothing too. I studied online. I looked up all the commercials. I looked up a lot of TV shows. Look at what the actors are wearing. Yep. If you're an actor and you see a role of yourself on TV that you want to play and you see their wardrobe, copy that wardrobe for headshot. For sure. Layering, if you look on TV, layering is a huge thing. Yeah. You'll, a lot of times you'll see a dad, they'll have like a plaid button up shirt, rolled up sleeve under. It's kind of like works as far as the color, yep. but it's a nice contrast. Mm -hmm. That's really a big Larry? thing. Larry. 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 Okay. Y'all gonna have to forgive me. I went to homeschool. What, what, what is <laughs> so it? Like, like Larry. Larry. So Larry. Yeah. Larry. Larry. Oh, Larry. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I thought you said Sorry. Larry. I'm like, so that's I think, like, I, think, I, think, I, think I, I think I said it weird. Like, who's Larry? I was like, so wait, there's a Larry? Okay, oh, Larry. Yeah. Oh, Larry. It's a real yeah, thing. I'm taking yeah. this in. No, no, no. I'm taking yeah. this yeah. in. Good, because I need new headshots. So yeah. I need to know. I need okay. to know what's in. You know? I actually I used to teach a uh, headshot photography class at the studio in down FD Photo Studio. Oh, I know. Yeah, I, would, I, would, I, yeah, I, I used to teach their monthly for headshot nice. uh, photography classes and nice. about my business and how other photographers can make money off headshots. Dope. Yeah. So theatrical. Theatrical with that. So commercial, back to that, even lighting, they don't like many shadows. They're okay. like, it's like pretty even, pretty like poppy, welcoming, approachable. Theatrical, you're allowed to have one side fall into the shadows. It could be more dramatic. Mm -hmm. Theatricals are more, sometimes even be, be more specific, like doctors, lawyers, or certain moods That's for really that scary. compared to like a theatrical mom or dad. Right. And then of course, kids kind of all fall into a slightly commercial category in a way. Um, but yeah, I'd say you have slightly more freedom for a theatrical. Um, some people even try to use model headshots for a theatrical. I see it a lot of times and they are like, I don't know why this didn't work. And it's because it's just, the approach is different. Yeah. So there are three different types of headshots, mm -hmm. modeling, commercial, and, and theatrical. theatrical. Got yeah. it. Got it. And so the lighting, the mood, all these things. So this is good for you guys to hear. Yeah. If somebody tells you I gave you a theatrical shot and you're not feeling any like darker tones or you mm -hmm. know, or you're having a commercial headshot and you've got some shadows going, that's not gonna work. So these yeah. are great tips for us to know. Because everyone has to remember too, when the casting director is looking at your photos, it's literally the size of your thumb and it's thousands of them. And they're looking through submissions. So it's whatever photo is gonna are they gonna stop on your photo? Does your photo pop? Does it stand out? And that's what needs to be for commercials. That's a great point. Yes. Do you have any other tips for models that are getting their headshots? For modeling? Yeah. So for modeling, I say just, it's really with modeling headshots, it's a lot on the photographer. It's really just as far as the model, you gotta be able to take direction. Less is Confidence. More. Less and more, it's all, in, it's all in the eyes. Got it. Eyes is a big thing. Mm -hmm. I have a question with makeup for yeah. um, females and males. What works for females? Is it like less is more? Like don't wear a lot of makeup, no full glam? Yes. And then like do the guys, do they wear makeup at all? Do they just come as they are? Like what's the difference? For there? acting um, headshots, I'd say makeup is pretty minimal. Unless you're playing a certain role. Like mm -hmm. if you're playing a, like let's say a rich housewife, mm -hmm. you may dress up a little bit more. You may add right. some type of lip. Right. You may actually add some like jewelry, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. Jewelry is kind of funny with headshots. Yeah, see, that's the thing too. It's you have to be very picky and choosy with it. Like, let's say if it's a punk rock person, you're allowed to like do whatever get jewelry you want. Right. Get in the character, yeah. Okay. Now versus modeling. As far as modeling, like modeling headshots. Modeling headshots, you're allowed to get more dramatic with the makeup, a little more in the eyeshadow. It's really. It's also on your agent and how they see you. Like because, where they're marketing yeah, you, I guess. Yeah, because like if you're more so, they see you more so as a fashion model, then your 
me more so fashion portraits. Yeah. As far as um, commercial lifestyle, yeah, you may be more, you may even be leaning against a tree or against right. like, you know, a woodshed. Right. Like She's with like, your hands in your pockets. Yeah. She want to do those guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Visualizing it. Yeah. And then, cause I always think of the clients that work out here. You have, you know, your Skechers is one of your biggest clients out For here. Sure. Um, any type of Old Navy, yeah. any other clients like e that. Yeah, all those e-com catalog stuff. So, so what are like the main photos you think should be in your portfolio if you're a model just getting started? What like yeah. are the signature photos that you need? Like a black and white? Or so if you're in LA, I would say you could have a black and white, you don't need it, but I'd say you need some commercial smiley looks. Got it. You need some ones of you presenting the product in a presentable way. You need some shots motion like you walking and seeing the product work, maybe even jumping. It's they seeing like the product work. at LA. So is it based off of like yeah, where be, you're at? Because so. LA is a commercial lifestyle market and New York is more so fashion. Got See? it. There we go. Like like some good most, tips here, guys. most of the big paying fashion jobs are in New York For compared sure. to LA, which like you can make a lot of money off commercial lifestyle here. Yeah. You can make a lot of money off just smiling your ass off. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So and that's whenever I was working in print. Yeah, that's all I was doing. I was just smiling and. Do you think that um, most models transition into acting like it's a natural progression? I say a lot of them. A lot of them want to. Yeah. I shoot right. a lot of model turn actor headshots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I would say it's a natural progression because usually if you're in print out here, you will probably sign to a commercial agent. And then it comes. And then, in. yeah, and then, oh, okay, I could talk and walk at the same time too. So let's try <laughs> theatrical, you know? know? Funny. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's when they start doing acting classes and yeah. going to that. And of course, a lot of managers and agents out here, I would say it's a lot easier to get a manager and agent out here if you do look a certain way. Like a lot of models are, are find it easier to get an agent or manager in theatrical rather than some regular person on the street. Yeah. Right. You know, who's like just trying to get an agent because they're like, okay, how can I pitch you? What cast of directors and be like, right. oh, I want to see that person for a general meeting. Oh, I want yeah. to see that person for this. And, but the thing is too, now you see on TV, it's a lot of people that you see every day. And yeah. so it's all about just standing out, taking a risk and. Right. And I guess not pigeonholing yourself. Mm. Yeah. It's like, a lot of people have to understand in this industry, you really have to have like a foolproof plan. You can't just go, I'm just going to be an actress. I'm just going to be a model. I'm just, you know, from every professional that we've heard, everybody that we've interviewed mm -hmm. have really had these multifaceted careers, modeling just being a staple part mm -hmm. for or them. A stepping or a stepping stone. Or yeah. a stepping stone. So I think it's really important for our listeners to just know, like you got to think of the big picture because there's so many ways to get money out here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we have to in order to live. Shoot. If you want to live in LA. Right. Yeah. 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 Or New York. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, so you really have to be open to these alternative, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's almost interesting because you kind of just tapped into what works for you. It's mm -hmm. interesting that now you do the headshot things. You picked up a camera. You're like, I really like this song. <laughs> right. I'm going to do yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. model so friends. It's like, yeah. Exactly. And I really... I was encouraged by a theatrical manager before because she didn't like her headshot photographer. Got it. And so I was like, well, if I study this, will you just start sending me clients? And she was like, we'll see. You know, I'll guide you. And so she started guiding me for a few shoots. And from there, I just got obsessed with it. And I was like, let's create a structure to where I could do this and help others and not also just rape them for profit. Yeah. Right. And you work with beauty brands too, right? Yeah. Right now, um, I'm a... I'm a director of digital content for Beauty Blender. Nice. Ooh. And so that kind of just came through me just constantly creating stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I just working any other way I can. I've worked from a PA to producer to yeah. gaffer, sound. We all have. <laughs> yeah, like every, every, every little thing. And so I kind of yeah. just, yeah. yeah. That's cool. So last question, mm -hmm. what's any tips for uh, preparing for a photo shoot? I guess I'm on the talent end. Sleep. Got it. Sleep. <laughs> um, wardrobe. Have that set the day before. Just make sure you don't have a tight time frame before or after the shoot so you won't think about that. Yeah. Really sleep That's is a big thing because eyes eyes are key. If your eyes, like, even though you think you're fine, you, you drink coffee, you just yeah. see it. Yeah. The yeah. eyes don't lie. The eyes don't lie. 
Yeah. Get your sleep. Yeah. Okay? And don't be rushing out of there trying to go catch a movie or whatever you're trying to do afterwards. Give yeah. yourself some time. Yeah. That's, that's a good little note. Well, on that note, thank you so much, Brandon. We yes. appreciate all of the knowledge. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah, this was dope. This yeah. was good. You yeah. guys got a lot of good information there. Yeah. Right? I suggest you take it and you run. And tell <laughs> our listeners where they can find you on Instagram if they want their headshots taken. Yeah, so if you want your headshot taken you could go to at (laughs) brandon sb photo and right now i actually don't have a lot of headshots there but if you go to www.brandonsbphoto.com i have all my headshots there men women children that's that's business right there there. there you go all right well let's set up a shoot (laughs) (laughs) and that's a wrap thanks guys yeah thank you if you're a new model looking to take your career and portfolio to the next level visit themodelexperience.net.